Hi guys, I'm Yair from Rain the Dog, and you're watching our series of Beyond Selenium. If you listen carefully to this series of lectures, you will find new and creative ways how to overcome some common problems in Selenium. In the previous lecture, we've overcome the common problem in Selenium of how to wait for an element. Sometimes we already identified the element and the only thing we need is to, for the element to vanish, to disappear. Basic Selenium does not give you the tools of how to deal with this kind of situation. Why do you need for an element to vanish? Let's say you want to click on a button or you want to insert a text and let's say you've got a box that is covering and you can interact with this element that you want to interact. So you will have to wait for this element to vanish. Let's say it's a pop-up message, a warning message, whatever, some kind of a overlay that is not even displayed visually, just there and you need, I don't know, like three, four, five seconds, 90 milliseconds, whatever, you need for that to disappear. Okay, so let's get to work. First of all, I've already wrote those two methods. I want to uh, talk about this basic method, which can be also used for other stuff. It's called is element enabled. It's very similar to the uh, is element disabled method that we've seen in the previous lecture. But besides of checking if the element is null and returning a false value, we also try, uh, have a try and catch block to see sometimes this throws a stale element reference exception. In this case, we want to return a false value. So I also have a try and catch block. If you don't know what, why we implemented this method that way, I recommend you to go back to the previous lecture and listen to my explanation of why do we have this method of is element disabled. Now let's get to work. The wait for element to vanish, as usual, returning a Boolean value. It received an element that we already identified on the screen. It doesn't matter how we identified it by, let's say, ID, by a CSS selector, by a class name, whatever, okay? This is our start time. It's very similar to the wait for element that we talked about it earlier. First of all, I will try to see if the element is enabled. If I have a false value, I already have the answer and I know that the element does not appear on the screen anymore. If not, I have this simple while loop. This loop will iterate as long as the element is found value is true and also that we don't have a timeout. Okay? In the previous lecture, we also talked about the timeout. So please go back if you don't understand why we do this timeout. Every time the loop iterates, we'll store the answer from is element enabled into this Boolean value. After we'll break out of this loop, we'll return the opposite of the value that we want. Why? Because we're waiting for the element to vanish. Okay? If the element was found all the time, okay, because we are trying to negate that, if the element is found all the time, so in the end, in order to see if the element was vanished, let's say we got a true value, so we want to reverse it to a false value because the element didn't vanish in the timeout that we gave it from the beginning. Okay? I hope this was clear enough. If not, please tell me in the comments down below. That's all for today. Thank you for very much for listening and viewing this video. Please hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with our most recent lectures. And hope to see you next time. Bye.